my behavior indicates that I'm afraid. Okay. Now I see you okay, sir. The okay. actual perception of fear is elusive. How do I reach and deal with this deep-rooted but unconscious emotion? My behavior indicates that I'm afraid. Yet the actual perception of fear is elusive. How do I reach and deal with this deep root seated but unconscious emotion? Do you want to go into this now? To deal with it on Saturday. Doesn't have to be the If one has observed that this Sorry. problem of fear has existed from time immemorial, it has existed with man. Man has lived both consciously or hidden deep down. Its roots very, very deep. And either we have escaped from it through logic, through analysis, through any form of entertainment that helps us to avoid coming directly into contact and holding. Or we have suppressed it. Or we neglect it. We have lived with fear for a million years, so what is the problem? And one knows the consequences of fear. Physical shrinkage, a, a tendency to be a hypocritical resistance, an avoidance of the fact that really. So if one really profoundly wants to be free from that reaction called fear, one has to go to the very root. There is biological fear. Body, the organism which must protect itself and the fear of disease, old age, death, and the fears of past memories. So fear is again common ground upon which all human beings stand. So either we deal with it superficially or inquire into it very, very deep. What is the root of fear? I know one knows various forms of fear. Death, bondage, fear of 
fear of tomorrow, fear of uncertainty, fear of insecure, fear of not being loved, or love but not being receiving that love, fear of loneliness, fear of loss, fear of not having anybody to depend on, and so on. There are various forms of fear. The fear of the dark, the fear of love. Do we deal with the outward forms of fear? That is, I'm afraid of my rock. Or I'm afraid of a bully. A bully. Bully all the time to lie and do all kinds of things. And there is a fear of that comes from pressure, but an aggressive, slightly demented person. So, do we want to deal with fear, superficial, which is intellectual? Verbally, or we want to go into very, very, very deep. Please, it's a serious question. You must answer for yourself. If you want to deal with the superficial, that's endless. It's like a tree. The moment you cut down one branch and Think of it, there is another right? perpetual flowering of fear. Or we're going to observe the nature structure of the constant When we want to deal with it deeply, go to the very roots. What is the root of fear? Things are not telling you. This people is not pointing out we are together in the street. Remaining this complicated problem, which has crippled humanity. And out of fear, we've done all kinds of things, invented all the gods and all. There is absolutely no psychological fear, and you are, you are beyond all those. So what is basically the root of it? Is it time and thought? Please, we are investigated. I'm not telling you. I'm questioning. Is it time, the future, or the past? And is it also thought, thinking about the future, thinking about the past, thinking what might happen? Or what has happened. 
the future is time. The past is time. The past modifying itself in the present moves towards the model of the future. The remembrance of an incident which has caused here and the future of that incident awakening the new fear. I'm following it. Am I, am I talking to myself or we are meeting each other? So there is horizontal fear and vertical fear. Right? So I'm we're asking, is it time? The past, the present, and the future. I'm afraid of when he's afraid of the present. The instability, the threat of war, the bomb that put some country, another great tribal country might put it on this soil. So when he's afraid of the past, the present, and the future, this is a moon, right? It's not something that is static, it's a moon. And so a movement means time from here to the village, across time, travel to, to the village, from one point to another point to each time. So we are asking if time is one of the factors of fear. Logically, it seems rational, same. And is thought also the root of fear? I think tomorrow might bring me unemployment. I'll be unemployed tomorrow. The thinking about why I am I am employed, thinking about it tomorrow is also. The beginning of make your friend thinking about the past, the incidents, the, the psychological accidents which have brought about certain forms of fear, thinking about the past, thinking about the future, thinking about the actual moment of life in which there is such tremendous uncertainty. Thought breeds fear, right? You follow me? So time and thought are they the major factors of fear? And if they are endless, in reality they are, what do you want to do? You understand my friend? Have you, you are meeting each other? I, you have explained this to me, that time and form is the root of it. You are going to you have explained it. Not in great detail, but to, I've captured the meaning of what you have said. Now, I ask, then you ask me, is it an idea that you have accepted? 
the words that you have said, or listening what you have said to me. From that listening, I have made an abstraction of into an idea. And I'm struggling with the idea. Then I ask, how am I to put that idea into action? You see the difference? It's very complicated. You have understood the answer? Is this clear? We have the habit of making abstractions of a fact. Those abstractions become ideals, ideas, concepts, conclusions, all verbal. And then I ask myself, how am I to carry out these ideals, these ideas, this concept that time and thought are the root? You understood? I have made an abstraction of what you have told me. Time and thought of written here. And I'm pursuing the idea. How am I to carry out in life? The speaker says, please don't do that. Don't make an abstraction of what you have told me. Time and thought are the root of truth. Don't translate it to an idea, but find out the truth of it. The actuality, that is, I see that I really am afraid of the past, which is so. Also, I'm afraid the present, because the things are so incredibly distracting on and also I'm afraid of tomorrow the future that bomb the nuclear bomb the mugging the mad terrorists and the politicians who were gay that's the present so also the future so I realize I see the fact not the idea that time and thought are the root of fear. I said next Saturday I'm going to much more in a different way, but this is the root of fear. Now what shall I do? I realize I, I see the fact, I see the truth of what you have told. Not Romantic, idealistic, all that. It's no mean. I see the truth, the actual truth of what you have told. Then the difficulty arises if you have gone that far. Who is the observer who actually sees the fact? You understand all this? Or is this true? Who is the observer? He says, oh, yes, I see the truth of it. Is the observer different from what he sees? You understand my question? When I say yes, I see the truth of what you have told me. I have already played a trick, which is, I see the truth of it. That means I am different from the truth. You follow it? Right? Is this clear? Let me put much more simple. When, I, when I'm angry, 
Is the anger different from me? Or at the moment of anger, there is no difference. There is this tremendous reaction. A few seconds later, I say, I have been angry. Therefore, I have divided myself as the mean who is being angry. Right? You see this? So, when you have told me the truth, the fact that time and thought are the factors of fear, I listen to it very carefully. And I say, yes, I see the truth. And the perception of the truth is something out there and me watching. I tell you, or do I, there is no observer but only the actor. You understand the difference? Do, do, are we meeting some? Meet, I observe that tree. In that observation, words spring up that's an oak tree. And that the very naming of that tree prevents me from actually looking. You, know, you understand? If I go to a museum and see a picture, a painting by the by the old masters, I don't like modern paintings, so everything. And I go there and look. When I compare one master and son of master, I'm not looking at the actual painting of a particular master. I'm comparing, judging. I'm never observing very closely without any sense of other painters looking. So, when I observe, when I see the truth of what you have told me, there is no division between the observer and the observer. There is only the truth of it, not I see. And that perception, which is holistic, frees the mind from complete. Don't you feel so puzzled? Look, sir. You're not tired to move on with it. It's very important to understand this. I am afraid. Suppose I'm afraid. Psychological. I then try to control it. I try to rationalize. I try to escape. I go to somebody to help me to resolve it. So I'm always acting upon, on it. Right? Is that clear? That's what we are all doing. Acting upon it either to dissipate or to control it, or to run away from it, or to suppress it. This is what we do, acting upon it. So there is always this conflict. Is that clear? The struggle not to be afraid. It is a conflict. Now, 
can that conflict end? I'm putting the question this way. Can that conflict between me and the fear, me controlling the fear, suppressing and so on, and thereby this division, which inevitably brings conflict, can that conflict end? You get it? That's my question. I say, how can that conflict end? Why does this division between the me, the I, who is trying to suppress, control, dominate fear, why is there this division? Is this division actual? Or is it merely semantic? Verbal? Or not being able to solve the problem? Thought has divided itself as the me and the fear. So you probably have never thought about all this. So let's so it is important to resolve this conflict. Because we live in duality. If I am this, I should not be that. I should be that. So there is always this, du this duality which brings about comfort. Right? Now, I want to find out. Uh, no, I won't use that. I want to. Can this conflict end? Is there, please listen. Is there an opposite? I am afraid the opposite is not to be afraid, right? Or have cut. Is there an opposite to fear? Or there is only the ending of fear, not the opposite. So, is there an ending of fear? The ending being no conflict, right? If I end it through conflict, that means I'll go on, it'll be perpetual. You get this? So can, can this end? To end something, there must be no me who is trying to end. If I try to end it, I'm in conflict. But can I, is there an observation of this reaction called fear? Without the past interfering with that observation. The past being the remembrances, the many fears have had. So the past can abstain from looking at the fact without the memory of yesterday's. And you are young to understand. If I'm married, I meet my wife every day. Every day. Rather bored. Every day. Listen carefully, please. 
was up every day. So I begin to know her. I know how she looks, what her gestures, all the rest of the words. So gradually, I have built up a knowledge about her. And whenever I look at her, all the knowledge comes up. The knowledge is the past. As I built the knowledge day after day, day after day, day after day, accumulated the various incidents and so on and so on. So whenever I see her, this knowledge, which is the past, looks at me. Right? You're, you're doing this. It's nothing new. Only we are putting it worse. And so this knowledge is the remembrance of things past, meeting the present, and so dividing. Physically, of course, my wife is a male and female. But psychologically, I've divided myself. You understand? The remembrance of the accumulated memories which is knowledge about my wife, has separated me, has separated as the me and her. Got this? The past has brought about this division. Now, similarly, the past remembrances of fears, past remembrances, of accidents of fear, the, the happenings of fear is stored in the brain. And that brain is remembering the past. And so when it present reaction, which has been, which comes, you name it immediately as fear and record it as fear. You follow this? Right, is this clear? No, don't tell me this. Not clear. I can't hear it. Sorry. I do try to put it in here for different groups. The past is time. The past is the observer. And so the observer says, yes, that's fear. I know it's fear because I've had it so many times. So, the moment it recognizes it's part of the past, right? you see this fact. So can you look at that reaction? Is there an observation of that reaction from the past? If using an energy which has already been employed year after year, right? That's a wastage of it. Is there a new energy that meets this fear without the past? You understand? God's sake. Make me feel. You see, fear exists only, I realize, one sees the truth that time and thought of the book. Fear exists when there is inattention, when there is no attention. If I give attention, 
period of stage But my brain has been conditioned not to give attention to this reaction. When you have sexual feelings, you Whereas, what you call fear, you give total attention, which is not to analyze, not to rationalize, not to escape, not to observe it from the past. Attention means that giving your whole energy to look. Then when you do fear is go on and go in different ways and Saturday we go into it much more. Maybe sir, I'm muted. No, I'm okay. <clears throat> yes, sir, sir, bye. Unmute. Sir, sir, bye, yeah. Unmute, unmute. Are you able to hear yeah. me? Yeah, yeah. Uh, are you able to hear? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. I can hear you. Yes. Yeah. Okay. So here the Krishna ji is answering a question: How do I deal with my deep rooted emotion? Right away, I think Krishna Ji would have said that the entity which is trying to deal with the emotion, that entity means I or me, is not different from emotion. And so one cannot deal with emotion, with a this entity called I. But there is something different than I, different than emotion, which can see clearly what Krishnaji is saying, that the observer and the observed, they are one. Like I and my anger, they are not different. But to see this, it requires insight. And that insight, generally, um, people don't have because they have not experimented. So people who are listening to Krishnaji very, very attentively, and then when they are alone, they sit quietly and observe how fear comes or how thought arises. It's not the question of fear only, but there are many problems like fear, anger, jealousy, loneliness. Everything is arising from thought. Or, and from thought even arises the thinker, that the thing, that thinker which wants to deal with the problem. So both the thinker and the problems like fear they both are the product of thought or thinking. And the only um, key or solution, it seems to me, is to observe. 
and not observe through this eye or thinker, but uh, observation which is independent of the thinker and thought, both. So <clears throat> Krishnaji is explaining very well, but only when people experiment it in their daily life. Initially, one has to do it when one is alone in a quiet atmosphere and give the whole attention to what is happening in the in the mind, how thoughts are arising. So this is lacking because most of us, we are afraid to be alone and to be silent. Because this silence itself creates the fear. And actually that silence is the freedom. And without that silence, we cannot observe clearly. But that silence is so frightening that we try to keep ourselves busy in many activities. And so we are not interested in observing the root, the root of fear or anger and all these problems. So, <clears throat> Um, I give this is all very abstract. It may look very abstract to people who have not experimented with this, uh, what Krishna Ji calls attention, pure attention, which is beyond thinker and thought. But I just give an example that my friend who, who lived in Bhavanagar. He wanted to come to Rishi Valley. I was in Rishi Valley. And my friend, very deeply interested in Krishnamurti for many, many years, but he had not come out from Bhavnagar. He had at one time wanted to go to Mumbai and listen to Krishnamurti, but the fear prevented him from traveling. And then after Krishnaji's death, he wanted to visit Rishi Valley because I was there. And twice he booked his ticket to come to Rishi Valley. And twice he canceled his ticket because there was a fear, fear of going to a different place. And he was he had not gone outside Bhavnagar. Finally, one of his friends just pushed him and said, don't cancel, cancel your ticket. And so he came in the train. And uh, there were all kinds of thoughts were going on when he was traveling in the train and he thought the train will fall in the river and uh, all kinds of imagination. So fear comes because we imagine something which is not there. And that is why this fear. And we are not able to look. And my friend had read Krishnamurti for many years, but he could not look directly at his own fear. And so this is the problem with people who have understood intellectually what Krishnaji is talking about. But as long as that choiceless observation has not come, that choiceless awareness or intelligence, which can look at the beginning of a thought, beginning of fear, beginning of jealousy, or loneliness, or fear, or anything. As long as that has not come in our life, there will be a conflict between me and my fear. I want to solve my problem. That will not come. This solving of one's problem will not arise when there is a direct perception of the arising of the problem. So. I can go on, but I think I don't want to go right now. Let other people speak. But what Krishnaji says is very simple if one, one is able to do it. And it can happen within a day. It, one doesn't need so much time. It, it, it requires a lot of attention, energy, curiosity, honesty, all this quality to see what is as it is. And 
that's why Krishna Ji says freedom is at the beginning, but that freedom is frightening for most people because people don't want to be alone, to be silent, to direct the attention inward and see clearly what is happening. Once a person is able to do it, then a person doesn't need to read Krishnamurti again because what he says seems very, very clear, very, very obvious. Only one has to experiment with it. Okay, I'll finish right now. Thank you. Thank you, Ashtabha. Yes, Bhagmare. Are you able to hear my voice, sir? Yes, sir. Actually, today's topic is very serious topic. And uh, it is lengthy also and difficult to understand. And even one session is not uh, sufficient for this. And today, time is also more. Uh, we, are, we have taken a very long video. So I have cut short my uh, other uh, description, which I wanted to make uh, some comments on JK's uh, saying. And I'm just uh, coming directly to the point what uh, I wanted to say. So let us discuss on the major key points on the, of, of the subject. First, we will see that what JK has to, uh, these all points are taken from the JK statements or the today's uh, JK's uh, uh, version, whatever he has said. So the main points are root of fear. Uh, you may feel it uh, slightly revolutionary, whatever I will be talking. But this is my own experience and uh, I have gone through it. And uh, uh, it, is, uh, it is what are the views uh, I am expressing are my views, root of fear. As per my views, time and thought are not the root of fear. But yes, they breed it, enhance it and blow it out of proportion. The root of fear is basically our inadequacy, our limitedness, our bondage in body, and uh, basic psychological parameters, trait, traits, tendencies, uh, virtues, vices, etc. of a man, which also makes him individual, unique, etc. So again, individuality is coming into the picture as to how one is able to deal with fear uh, his capability, his capacity, his resources, etc. Second point. Uh, here, I would also like to mention that since you are in body and uh, you feel always limitedness, so as long as uh, he said that um, uh, this psychological fear we are talking and not uh, uh, there will be a biological fear and other fear, but they are all linked. They are not, uh, as observer is observed, similarly, the your uh, whole uh, system is basically one. On one side, you say that technical ego will be there. So ego will also be technically has to present. So knowledge has to be also present uh, for its use, usage at right uh, place. And uh, your uh, body uh, will always be uh, giving you the messages of the physical threat and all that. So uh, this basic uh, thing, fear, will exist. Second point, is, is observer is observed. Yes, he's right. And it also means as long as the ego or me is there, the, tech, uh, the tackling of fear will not be effective. So it is very clear. And uh, the same, at the same time, it makes it difficult. Because as long as ego is there, me is there, the fear will also be there. Now comes the external fear and internal fear. As long as the external situation or outer situation uh, challenge is there, the fear will exist. Say, for example, a student is having fear of exam or a corporate employee uh, has a fear of uh, completion of target. Anxiety is there. The fear will exist on end. The fear will exist on ending or improvement of outer situation. The fear will be in control. Uh, as soon as the, in case of student, as soon as the exam is over, he will be free. And as soon as the, the corporate employee is, uh, is concerned, as soon as the target is completed or whatever is there, the, uh, um, 
the matter is solved or resolved, then the fear will be less. For internal fears to end, ego has to be dissolved. This is very clear. Right from, uh, even JK also confirms it and it is there. Now comes to the most important point of energy. More uh, the more the fresh energy is available to the person, more easily he can cope up with the fear. Fresh energy is, means directly means the ego uh, is quite uh, dissolved and the, the fresh energy is available to him so that he can uh, tackle the fear easily. Say for example, in a, in a young age, uh, we can do many things, but in the old age, when our energy level has gone down, uh, we are uh, we, uh, cannot do many things. And then when we cannot do many things, then um, at the same time, the, uh, the fear arises. And that when the, this uh, fear arises, because uh, of uh, whether I will be in a position, as uh, Harsha sir said, whether uh, I will be in a position to do it or not, whether the train will be reaching in time, or it will be fall down, or at whatever the questions are there, or whatever the thoughts are there, they, those will crop up. So internal fear, fresh energy has to be available there. If it is not, then first he has to dilute the ego or arrange to get the fresh energy. Now, what is the meaning of getting the fresh energy? Even we. Uh, Keep on repeating the JK, JK teachings and JK this thing. So JK teaching and JK's uh, words give us a sort of uh, encouragement or it gives us a sort of energy. So why people actually go for, uh, keep on uh, uh, reading the JK? There are many things, but the one, one of the, uh, there may be entertainment, there may be uh, some newness in it always, fresh uh, freshness or whatever it is. But one thing is there, it also gives the courage. It gives you the courage. Uh, you, you have got uh, some, a sort of crutch, crutches. The uh, Krishnamurti words give you the support to tackle many, uh, so uh, the brain becomes uh, a sort of, um, uh, what we can say, it gets the support to tackle the difficult uh, time in life. Now, the question of attention, this is another point. You can give attention when you are free. Archad sir said that you have to go to uh, woods and you have to see the uh, plant and all that or a tree, etc. Or you have to remain uh, silent uh, in a free place and all that. That is okay. But is it uh, how much time you can uh, spend in uh, your daily life? That is important. Uh, out uh, as long as outer situation is not threatening, you can do it. However, if you are engaged in some work where focus or concentration is required, giving attention is very difficult. He said, when there is inattention, there is fear. But whenever you are having any um, outer uh, threatening or threatening or this thing, you will go into uh, again in that. Um, uh, the, the fear will again uh, arise. Say, for example, again, uh, we can take the example of the student and uh, we can take the example of that uh, corporate employee uh, or we can take a, even a, a normal employee. He has to catch the bus and he has to do many things in uh, daily life. So that will always uh, keep on um, uh, maintaining that fear, basically. On the contrary, it will al also add and can, can he give the attention? It is very difficult to give attention also and uh, do other things also because mind is not uh, that capable of uh, uh, concentrating or focusing uh, on two things at a time. It is not a question of concentrating, but uh, focus, if we say. Uh, you, you have to have attention also and you have to uh, do your normal work also, uh, which is uh, quite uh, uh, challenging. So that is difficult. So we can say that solutions based on seeing the fact as truth with diluted ego are temporary. 
is very clear these are temporary suppose uh, yes i understand uh, whatever the question is says i remain with it without uh, the time being my ego is not uh, challenged and uh, i am remain with the with the free energy and all that so at that time the fear will go but uh, but as soon as the new challenge uh, occurs it will again arise that is very clear are temporary then what is the permanent solution then what is the permanent solution then it is the awakening of intelligence that is the only permanent solution which can make you free thereby by giving always a supportive fresh energy to deal with the fear why i am saying that uh, awakening of intelligence will uh, give you support and this thing because again individuality comes not all the people uh, have awakened their intelligence only you have uh, say for example awakened your intelligence then uh, you have to face uh, still you have to face the music of the world whatever is happening suppose there is a war in ukraine and you are in ukraine you have to face the consequences so in such cases intelligence still will uh, support you and uh, you your fear will not go out of proportion and uh, you will still feel uh, at um, comfortable to deal with it so that is possible but uh, again uh, to end it completely a complete dissolution of ego is a must that's what i feel thank you thank you Yes, Dharma Sir, please unmute. Good evening, friends. I think I am audible. <clears throat> yes, sir. Uh, although what J.K. in this video talked about is generalize generalizing in. what all conditions a person can be afraid of something something a number of types number of psychological factors based on some material things and whatever it is but it was generalizing the questioner asked questioner i don't know whether he got the answer from while listening to all these things because it's a matter of subjectivity each person has different fears and fears are all types all types thousands of types of things anything can uh, uh, can make you afraid of that thing so generalization doesn't help and even our solutions as generalizations if we have to do this to get this and to get permanent solution you have to do that this also will not work because it's a purely subjective matter and wagmari ji was talking about thought relationship of thought that is not always thought in what form fear comes to us anyone in what form either in the form of thought this is also also image or image only these things happen nightmare what happens and i may be a mixture of i am i may be afraid of a number of things so a person who is afraid anyway cannot see anything so he is asking my behavior shows although that uh, duality and division is also is there that my behavior shows that i i have deep rooted or deep seated emotions and i want to see them how to see them so he is virtually asking someone to help him to see his deep seated emotions which are purely subjective that's why he didn't say anything about mm, that particular questioner he you he has to go to a psychiatrist to go for that this type of consultation but anyway some generalization was done then uh, what could be the reason he thought what could be the reason that i am not 
not able to, or anyone is not able to see is deep rooted. I don't know on what basis he is saying deep rooted because he is not able to see which of these things or a combination of number of fears are making me feel like this, fearful, not able to see anything. So that could be, and that suppressed, he has talked about these may be suppressed. A number of uh, Freudian and Jungian people also have talked about it when you keep suppressing. And why do, why does a person suppress anything? Because in society, those things are not considered good. Morality, a number of things. Everybody knows anger is bad somehow. It may not be, but we have this notion in us that anger, jealousy, hatred, greed, all these things are their psychological matters. So nobody wants to see things in himself as such because, because of societal pressure. So he doesn't want to see it. And uh, then I think he, he has talked about somewhere is horizontal fear and vertical fear. And this vertical fear may be this deep rooted in me inside, which I call deep seated in me. This may be, I was, it was, it was not very clear to me what does it mean, vertical. But this must be this only. This is what I assumed after this vertical, horizontal, you know that when past, present, and future, all these things, and this, I may lose this, I may lose that, and all those things. I have lost that, and I, I had disease, and all that. Those things are there. So, a person who is afraid, anyway, cannot see. Perception is cannot be there. And then it means we are not ready to see things as it is in any situation. So we are escaping. We are trying to escape it without seeing it properly for some reason or the other. So we are, we are shifting from what is to what should be. And religion, organized religions have done it. Most of the organized religions, if you see what are their dictates, don't do this, don't do, do this. But JK was exclusively emphasizing on see what is and what the problem is, be with the problem fully, and that includes all his attention, uh, concentration, everything with full energy, it, it says that you be with the problem and it will dissolve. Most of it may be wrong and you are taking it that way. In a way, so many things. So this is another way. And uh, that's why our most of the fears and then uh, what uh, reward and punishment business is also there associated in organized religion, religions. So that also is associated. If I don't go there, Excuse, excuse me, <clears throat> something may happen. There may be all sorts of things in Christianity is there, in Islam it is there, there, there is a judgment day and all that. So these, we are, we are a syndrome, we are a combination of all sorts of fears, belief systems, everything. So if I ask, there is no other way but to see myself, myself only, because most of the people must be knowing, I know most of the things I am bothered about. And they usually come as a thought. And once you realize that this is a thought coming to me, it gets over. Because the thought is not there. It's a thought. Nothing is there out there, a ghost which is not there. So likewise, these things have, to, these are very, personal personally to each person has to see himself or herself to find what he calls as deep seated most of the things are known things suppressed for one reason or the other this is what i feel thank you very much for giving me time sir <clears throat> thank you thank you thank you yes prashad garu please uh, sir We all know fear because fear is so prevalent and uh, we have all sorts of fears 
and uh, Krishna ji himself has enumerated so many forms of fears, like uh, you know, so many fears. Well, like old age, that nobody will see you, and uh, Murti Sahib and uh, I, we have an experience of diving into the river. Diving into the river from a height. And Murti Sahib, at his age, he is quite uh, advanced in age. At his age also, he does it. And I try to follow him. When I try to follow him, I experience fear. What would happen if something happens to you when you are diving? And I also observe young boys diving. Some of the boys, they die easily, without much hesitation. Other boys, they get stuck. They, they take a plunge forward and then come back like that, you know. They keep on hesitating for quite some time. All that is fear only. And actually, both the categories of boys are facing the same thing. Same height, same river, all that. How <clears throat> this boy is able to plunge so easily take the plunge so easily and jump into the water so easily and how why the other guy is feeling so scared. The difference is only in the thought. This boy has no thought of fear, no thought which causes fear and the other boy is caught in the snare of fear. I say, observe both. And then I realize, when I try to do the same thing, I realize that I am scared because of my thought process. When I realize that, fear subsides. It doesn't go simply because you have done it one day it doesn't mean the next day you have no fear. It doesn't mean that you are free of fear permanently. But every time the fear comes, you observe yourself and then that moment you become free. So, it is, I mean, Krishnaji is quite correct in saying that we don't have to give a certificate, but we feel it, it is, he is quite correct, correct in saying that uh, thought and time are the factors, are the root factors of fear. Time also, your past, your present, and your, the future. You, you project your fears into the future also. Similarly, your past also can haunt you. You have done something and you are scared that it gets revealed. So like that, time and the thought are, it is quite evident that they are the root of fear. And then how can we be free permanently? That is the question given by Dinesh Ji. He says, it is only when your ego goes that you can become permanently free. Maybe he is right. Ego is a problem creator most of the time. And for most of our troubles, our ego is the cause. So maybe that is there. And he also says it is awakening of intelligence only. This awareness that Thought and time are the factors of fear. That awareness itself contributes for awakening of intelligence. That itself is intelligence. 
And Harshadji has made a great point that there should be an observation which is free of the thinker and the thought. Yes, we have to realize that the thinker is just the past, our past, our background. That is the thinker. And so there should be an observation where you are not separate from fear. Fear and you, your fear and you are the same. You are not different from your fear. That type of observation is alone can free you from fear. Thank you, sir. That's all. Thank you. Thank you, Prashad Garu. I think most of us uh, in our conversations have basically said the same thing in different ways as Krishna has mentioned. <clears throat> On any deep-rooted emotion basically is a is a byproduct of our conditioning, the way you know we are conditioned. And that prevents us, that blocks us from seeing things as Arma Sahib has mentioned, or even Dinesh has mentioned. And ego is not something which is psychological in us. It's a creation of the thought. It's a creation of our conditioning. Yeah. So if we are not able to see something as it is without bringing our past through our memory and all that, which Christy calls thought and time and so on, one is bound to be fearful. But I fully agree with Prashad Garu that even when you see fear as it is and come out of it, it's not that next time something happens, you will not, you'll, you'll be immediately or you know instantly instantly free of fear. You have to go that through go through that process again and again. And I remain I remember a conversation between Christie and Dr. David Bohm where he says that is it possible to have that energy for all kinds of these blockages? which keeps us fear from, you know, keeps us away from fear of any kind. And I don't have to struggle again and again. And Krishna said, yes, it is. But I don't know, because he didn't elaborate how that energy comes and all that. But he says it's possible to have that energy. But I think if we can see it once, there is a possibility that it can be done. So I'll stop at that. And uh, Dinesh, before I come to you, let's uh, here, Rajendran, because we have not heard him. Yes, sir, Mr. Rajendran, please go ahead. Uh, yes, sir, thank you, Dimitri. Good evening to all. So, uh, in this uh, today's talk, uh, uh, Krishna Ji has, uh, uh, has mentioned in the uh, in the beginning that uh, how, how how what we are actually. Doing or listening to Krishna Murti, we've been uh, listening to him. Whether we get an abstract of what he says and uh, convert it into the idea, and we struggle afterwards to achieve to re, to re achieve that idea into action in our life. So, are we doing like this? That is the question uh, we have to ask ourselves. And uh, as uh, uh, Parik, Parik Saab suggested that experimenting. So experimenting and uh, I used to use the word testing. So that that will that that is a tool Krishna Ji has given that experimenting and testing in our uh, day to day life so that we we, we see ourselves what Krishna Ji is, is telling is uh, a truth or uh, real or uh, something some idea. And uh, now coming to this point, see, physical fear is somewhat okay. Suppose I am just walking uh, in the evening at the time of sunset and I come across a snake. Uh, so that is a physically, I am just I am taken aback. I, I reacted out of fear. So that is somewhat okay. So the psychological fear is, so next day also, in the daytime also when I walk, when I cross that particular uh, uh, road in a particular place, this psychological fear comes. Oh, yesterday I saw that uh, 
yesterday i come across a snake and uh, today also the same snake will be waiting for me are coming so that is a psychological fear and uh, krishna says talk is uh, today's talk is wholly about the psychological fear so physical fear is somewhat okay in the psychological fear the psychological fear arises only when the thought moves in and uh, and uh, all our life whatever we do is dictated by two dominant factors that is one what is pleasure and another is fear pleasure pleasure pain pain and fear is also say same, same so uh, so the fear of not getting the pleasure again that is that is that is uh, uh, and the avoidance of pain that is also fear so all our activities are dictated all our activities or uh, our even our life is dictated by these two factors pleasure and uh, fear so fear is weakness fear is cowardice then i want to and not only that fear creates pain and uh, and not only in myself in others also so so what i have to do to what i what i should do or how should i act to be free of that fear so i will i am ready i am i want to make an effort so whether that effort is going to help me or actually is going to help me to free from that fear or if i have a motive or aim or desire or goal to be free of fear whether that whether that motive mot because the motive aim goal desire are also another form of <laughs> a thought only how we this is so how I, i the thought creates fear and i want i immediately i i have a desire or motive to be free of that fear so that is also another thought so we are caught in that vicious circle thank you sir thank you thank you it is it's almost time to close so is it okay if i close it now okay okay so thank you all thanks a lot good night we'll we'll organize i think the second part of the talk some other day thank you